A Penny Saved. A Standalone Dark Bin Novel by Frank Fasano. Chapter 1 Angels in Armani. It was the kind of night that makes you wish that you called in sick. Especially when you are working mostly for tips. Even more so if the tips you are getting are more of the kind that jingle than the kind that fold. It is not easy being a single girl in the darkest place you can imagine. I would call Bourbon Jimmy's a dive, however. I would be afraid that the dives I know would take offense at that unfair comparison. Then wait for me in a dark alley with a baseball bat. My top three tips for drinking at Jimmy's are 1. Don't use the bathroom unless you absolutely have to, then if you really must hover. 2. Never get the meatloaf or the tuna melt, or anything off of the hot menu. On second thought you probably should avoid the cold menu as well. A very safe bet is don't eat here. 3. Make sure you check to see if your glass is clean. If it looks clean be careful because you probably pissed someone off so they probably spat in it then used a rag to spread it around. The owner only had three rules. 1. It only takes one person to run a bar. His second rule was that you never needed to spend any money on a place like this. If he could not fix it on a Monday morning then it wasn't needed. The third final rule not to mention the most important rule that Jimmy had was that never make a drink with frickin' umbrella in it. So, when someone walks into Jimmy's on a pair of shoes that cost more than I make in a week wearing a suit that cost more than my distressed classic Ford, he is either in the wrong place and in trouble or he is in the right place to be trouble. Let me just say. Lord he looks like the kind of man your mother would have warned you about if she had a much better imagination. Had a lifetime subscription to Cosmopolitan not to mention wrote sex and the city slash slash fan fiction. I could not help but sigh as I let a few fantasies about him start to moisten my dry daydream life. Mostly the one with him reaching his strong forceful hand over a tight. Firm buttocks, softly caressing then pulling out a big thick hard wallet then leaving an ample. Well deserved tip. Oh baby. That one really gets all my juices flowing. I gave him my patent 150 watt smile as he came up to the bar. He gave the lipstick red seat of the bar stool an apprehensive look then showed true grit not bolting for the door. Instead he drew out an honest to goodness monogrammed handkerchief wiping the stool off before he sat down. I could not make out the actual letters, however. It looked to be made of real linen or even silk. I saw him eye the bar warily but before he could bolt for the door. I reached under the bar pulling out the most clean-ish bar rag available. I gave the bar a thorough wiping down. Mostly I turned the greasy streaks into greasy swirls. I made a good show of it. More than worth the price of admittances. As he looked up at me, I turned up my smile by another 10 watts. If I wasn't careful I would either blow out my facial muscles or go too far over then end up with a serial killer grimace. You know like Heath Ledger in that movie where he wears more makeup than my whore of a sister. Vanity. Okay, she isn't really a whore. She is just a raging coquette not to mention a witch. I'm not joking about the last part, she is a witch. She even writes books about it. Wow. Sorry I just got my sibling rivalry issues all over the screen. It really isn't her fault that mother named her Vanity Pride naming me Penny Pride. So. Way to go mom, good job setting the bar low for me. Vanity's actually pretty good to me especially if this guy doesn't drop some Benjamins. She will probably be paying my rent this month. That may be only fair as she not only got the better name also the boob fairy was also much more generous with her. But she also has which thing going for her. I do not want you to think I'm spiteful towards her because I'm not. I am really, really not. I'm not spiteful towards my sister, I'm not spiteful to my sister. I'm really not spiteful to my perfect sister. Vanity. That is my mantra. If I keep saying it then it must be true. I must have chanted it to myself a little too long. I hope it was to myself because the Armani angel is still standing there with his head canted slightly to the left like that dog on the old RCA pictures. 
I wiped down the bar one more time giving him my biggest smile. Oh my god. I can see Heath Ledger reflected in his eyes. I toned it down asking him how he was doing tonight. I saw a look of silent contemplation drift across his face then I knew he was thinking about making a break for the door. I quickly said. You're in time for happy hour, you still beat the rush. Normal smile. Normal smile. Then he sat down returning the sentiment. He looked at me saying. Can you make me a death in the afternoon? With an eyebrow raised. Absolutely just try the meatloaf. Yes. I can make the drink only I will have to substitute ginger ale for the champagne then I could use vodka with green dish soap for the absinthe. He smirked embracing a deep cynicism saying. You have dish detergent under there? I took a step back looking around. I have some greenish Mr. Clean? He seemed to give the idea some thought. How about a Moscow mule? He said waiting to see how this would go over. I nodded saying. So go with the vodka with ginger ale then I will swap out the Mr. Clean for lime juice. How does that sound? So much for naming a Mr. Clean cocktail after you. I gave him a knowing grin saying. You look like a top shelf kind of guy. This is always a risky move gratuity wise. If you make a patron feel special then you can really make a nice tip. If the patron feels that they overpaid for a drink then that extra cash could very well come out of your tip. No member of the service industry ever wants that. In my head I said the secret for better tips. Jesus loves Martha and Mary and Lazarus, Saint Martha I resort to thy aid and protection not to mention voluntary gratuities. Just so you know the part about voluntary gratuities is not the actual prayer, it is my very personal addition. I must have given him the joker grimace again. The expression on his face looked like he just sucked a lemon. Without any further hesitation. I turned and mixed him Moscow mule with extra kick. When I turned back with his drink in hand, I gave him a smile followed by a quick wink saying. Let me know how that is hun. The smile had returned to his face slowly. Now it was firmly in place. He picked up the glass, regarding it. Turning it slowly then brought it towards his lips hesitantly. Then sniffed it. It must have lacked the criteria that would make it instantly rejected, so he took a small sip. Reconsidering this approach. He didn't even put it down he just treated the tumbler like a shooter killing it off one shot like a boss. He closed his eyes momentarily then he smiled. Putting the glass back down on the bar pointing at it like his finger was a gun, he said, Encore. If he was worried about the cleanliness of the glass, he must have been reassured by the amount of alcohol in the drink to vanquish any lingering germs. We chatted repeating the ritual a few more times during the course of the conversation. He was dropping a Jackson every round, drinks at Jimmy's don't even cost a sawbuck, $10. If I could keep my angel until closing, I could not only pay last month's rent but this month's not to mention the next. After we were five rounds in, he slowed down a bit but he started buying me a drink one for me for every three he downed. When he bought me a drink, he dropped a half C note telling me to keep the change. By 11 of the o'clock I was set with this month's rent working on next month ahead of my landlord. By my sister's hour, he was getting very flirty. He gave the back of my hand a gentle caress with the tip of his finger when he paid for his drinks then I started getting interested in more than just his role. His touch was electric, it gave me a deep shiver from my head to my toes. His fingers seemed to linger somewhere warm in between always searching to make contact with my skin. I was hoping that he was still into me not just seeing me through vodnoculars he must have had on by now. Vodnoculars are like beer goggles only with a higher magnification. We turn the flirting up to a new level then the life story started. You know the stories where the guy is forced to demonstrate his athletic prowess by showing how tight his muscles still are. Somehow that expensive imported black silk shirt seemed to come unbuttoned halfway revealing his white Egyptian cotton t-shirt that he wore tighter than the manufacturer would have imagined. He eventually made it back to the bar stool as the chit chat continued. I asked him about himself. He said he had been a model when he was younger. He still ran triathlon, 
he was some kind of agent, then, blah, now, blah, 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 oh, my goodness, don't you hate it when all people can talk about it as themselves. Then finally someone brought up the topic of how I started working as a bartender, it could have been me. I told him I had been bartending since high school. I had this boyfriend junior year, Snake. Snake owned a bar outside of Brick City so I worked Friday nights, weekends not to mention holidays there, but he was a Satanist with bad breath so it didn't work out. Then I dated his brother Newt but even though Newt was Snake's little brother you could call him his big brother, if you know what I'm saying. But that didn't really work out either. Then I met Thumper, let me tell you that was a crazy week. So, you only knew Thumper for one week. I said no way with a demure giggle, it came out too fast almost sounded like a snort. I only hung out with him for like two days. It was the week I met Snake then started working at his bar. He seemed hesitant, but he asked, so you slept with. He paused for a moment trying to remember either of the names or their proper order saying Snake, Newt then Thumper in the same week. I nearly snorted again saying, no way. What do you think I am? Anyway, I thought I was a lesbian that week so I didn't sleep with any of them just dated. I was polishing a glass, he looked as if he wanted me to continue the story of how I became a bartender, when I noticed the look of mild confusion on his face. The conversation seemed to dip for a bit but it rebounded when he ordered another round. Eventually he just used his handkerchief to wipe off the stool next to him so I just came around the bar with a bottle of Angel's Envy joining him on the human side. The flirting continued all the way until closing without interruption. He was even helpful if a bit handsy when I was cleaning up. Half the bottle of Angel's Envy was gone, but my rent was paid not to mention a little something extra. The closer I was to done, the more obvious he may have had one too many drinks. By the time the stools were upside down on the bar he needed me to walk him to the door. The whole way his hands were grasping for purchase obviously, so he didn't fall. This is the oldest tact for patrons hitting on bar girls, I always had a backhand slap for this behavior, always. I didn't feel like slapping him for some reason. The more he caressed my neck, back then my shoulders the less I wanted to give him a fresh one. He was being a real fresh one giving no signs of letting up. Even with his fumblings I managed to clean up the bar then we made it out the door. I locked up then helped him up the three steps into the chill of the 2.15 a.m. hit like a slap on the face. I felt more sober standing on the cold deserted street as holding him up as his hands wandered. A cold breeze brought up goose bumps under my black stockings. He was speaking softly but I couldn't hear or understand his soft mutterings. His feet seemed to be slipping as he was pulling me away from the streetlights of Dama Avenue down towards the shadowy alleys of Gacy Way. He had me by both hands pulling me down the block slowly. I saw a car turn the corner then start creeping down the block blinding me with the high beams. Mr. Armani seemed to straighten up clearly sobering considerably right at that moment. Just as the pool of light created by the brights passed before my vision cleared even brighter lights engulfed us. The roof of the car lit up like a nuclear burst, I could feel it in my head like a migraine or a 14-inch butcher knife in my brain. The sound of the electric window rolling down could be heard over the strong purr of a big V8 idling. Then a voice that was familiar spoke, Hey Penny are you okay? Turn off those damn lights was all I wanted to say, but I put on my best friendly smile saying who's that? Then I recognized it, shouting damn it crash. Turn off those frickin' lights before I make you pay your bar tab. A soft chuckle came from inside the car then the alley lights were shut off. The lights went dark, about six weeks later my vision started coming back to me. The voice came again from the inside of the car sounding more serious, Are you okay Penny? I could feel my companion's hand firm on my back as his body next to me tight like the coil of an overwound clock. No. I'm with that Mr. Armani seemed to crouch just a little, I finished saying no, I'm not okay I am still seeing spots. There was an audible sigh from the inside of the car then the soft chuckle came again. My vision returned slowly, then I could see the shield on the side of the dark bin police cruiser clearly now. The now recognizable voice came again from the inside of the car, so are you okay? Yes, 
came out in a huff I'm fine what are you doing tonight seeing how many people you can blind. No, he laughed you know we always look out for you. He leaned into the light seeming to look straight at my companion repeating the word always with a sense of menace. His strong jaw his piercing eyes pronounced in the black and white's bright interior light, he reached up to adjust the rear view mirror, his enormous bisect rippling menacingly through his perfectly tailored uniform shirt. I laughed saying yay, yay a push off flatfoot. Flatfoot he repeated in a wounded tone, I got my cruiser back. The light went off then soft giggle came again as the car pulled off. As the whir of the electric window started, I said we all know crash number four is just around the corner. His laughter sounded muffled by the window closing. I looked at my companion saying let's get you a taxi. His calm demeanor returned slowly but his hand felt cold on my back, I must have sobered up almost as much as he did because he seemed considerably less attractive to me now. No, I am okay I think by the time my car warms up I will be fine to drive. So, where's your car is what I said as I looked around. He pointed a long slender finger towards a large black sedan that was parked on the corner he said I'm parked right there. I was happy to see that Crash must have been true to his word because the old ship brown abandoned Buick that had been there for weeks taking up prime parking had finally been towed away. Free shots for Crash when he came in next time. He said can I give you a ride somewhere? I was about to say no when I felt his hand on my back again then I though what the hell. I said sure why not I only live a few blocks away from here. A large black alley cat with a strange white marking over its right I came out of nowhere blocking my path. I stopped looking down at him as he looked up at me mewing up at me, as if asking what the hell are you doing. I was starting to reconsider my current decision as I looked back at Mr. Armani. He was looking less appealing as I considered the wisdom from my feline friend. Then his hand ran up my back again feeling really good so I threw caution to the wind as he tried to give the cat a kick. The cat dodged the attack skillfully growling as it retreated back into the shadows. So, we jumped into his car, the interior looked like deep soft leather. It was freezing cold then I started feeling more than a little uncomfortable like I could feel the springs through all that thick leather. I didn't complain because I could throw this in my sister's perfect face next time, I saw her. His soft caress came again brining me back to my current surroundings, hot guy in a nice car. I would leave out the part about how the seat felt like a couch from Good Samaritan's thrift store. In the distance I could hear the sound of a cat's loud lonely cries. The sound was distant yet it was clear filled with echoes of sorrow. So, we sat there talking for a bit, you know more chit chat about nothing in particular you know. The whole time he kept running his hand over my body caressing shoulders then sliding down my spine to points lower, I felt drawn into him as the cold that was seeping into my bones didn't bother me so much. I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't figure it out. Weight ran through my mind as I remembered that if he didn't start the car it would never warm up. A soft blue glow started lighting up the car's interior but seemingly without a source that I could see. Was his car running? Right now I could not remember but then he leaned in for a kiss. The car was still off, he hadn't even put the keys in the ignition. I turned my head away from him I had started saying come on start the car, damn the environment. Before the words were spoken, he grabbed my hair firmly by the base of my neck then pulled my head down to the side really hard. Normally if I had known him better, I would have really enjoyed that. He was just moving way too fast so I pushed him off a little trying to I move away from him as the blue glow was brighter. The bright light made me feel warmer while it only seemed to make him uncomfortable. Now feeling considerably more sober not to mention less comfortable being alone with him. I looked right at him intending on extricating myself from this situation. Only my thoughts actins not to mention my will were all lost in a moment of absolute terror. As I looked into his eyes, those cold dark eyes that showed no signs of having pupils or perhaps it was all pupil. Through the tight slits of his eyes all I could see was a cold black reflection like an onyx mirror. Not a speck of humanity was visible just a chilly darkness. I felt sick as I gazed into that parody of life all I could see was a void so deep I could feel myself falling into it. I could see how long his incisors were or had become or had they always been like that. I knew they couldn't have been, but I didn't know what I knew. 
The blue light was so strong now that he seemed to pull away from it. I could see that the strong glow was coming from the beautiful necklace pendant my sister had given me or maybe she left it at my house. Maybe she left it out on her dresser when I crashed at her house, damn it who can remember. That isn't important the thing was the. Mr. Armani was staying away from the glow but he still had my hair in a death grip he gave no signs of letting go. The glow seemed to cast strange shadows outside the car in the darkness surrounding the vehicle. Swirling incoherent shapes that moved away while at the same time were coming closer. He was fighting whatever power the blue light held fighting the pain he was getting closer to me. The blue was not looking good on him. Do you know how some people look really bad under fluorescent lights? Well the blue glow did that to him times only to a factor of a hundred. What had seemed nearly angelic moments before now looked horrific in that soft blue glow. The feeling of his breath on me was as cold as it was foul. Now laced with a strong aroma putrescine making the entire situation worse. I was still pushing him away when I heard the sound of smashing glass. Just inches from my neck with a mouth full of black razors then suddenly his head was pulled back away from me. He made a deep mournful sound that made reach straight down into my stomach then twisted it into knots. The echoes reverberated in the confined space of the car rejoining the endless scream, together forming a defining cacophony of pain. The noise deafened my ears while still leaving me victim to the reverberations in my head. My vision went red only made brighter by the blue light from my necklace started to fade. Wiping some of the blood out of my eyes with the back of my hands I looked at his still trembling form. His eyes black mirrors his teeth long white fangs tinged with his own blood. The hands that clutched for his throat were tipped with long black fingernails that looked as dark as raw iron. I looked at him his head pulled back much further than it was originally intended to. Not to mention the fact that his neck was gone now only a black gaping slice. There was a glint of metal as the sharp blade pierced the top of his skull then twisted with a gut-wrenching cracking sound. The sound of the scream faded in my ears replaced by a loud gurgling that softened. The sound finally ended as the body stopped grasping for a throat that was no longer existed. The world grew silent as the body became still. Time stopped as I took in every inch of the hideous thing before me. Not only the black blood. Just the real appearance of what I had been drinking with for the past hours had instantly turned from a very attractive man into something out of a nightmare. There was movement outside the car it may as well have been happening in another universe. My thoughts were racing as my body felt frozen. The wicked blade was pulled out of the skull as the head slung back out the window now lifeless. The shadowy form from that other universe retreated from the scarce light that came through the world I currently occupied. It was now only one shadow among many only it was slowly moving along the side of the car. My brain was screaming for my body to move only my body was not listening. The shadow was now floating across the rear window in a serial camera obscura parody of realism. Still. My body was not willing to take a hint to start running for my life. Oh, my goddess I really need to stop criticizing the stupid shit people do in horror movies. Because just waiting for the killer to come kill you really takes first prize for stupid ways to die. Now the shadowy form went out of sight no longer visible through the dirty back window. The darkness went still now only becoming only swirling slowly in shapeless chaos. The world was growing more distant from any connection to reality. Whatever world I was occupying was still moving slowly by steadily away from the world that I had previously existed in. My pulse was still racing with echoing thunder in my ears as my heart tried to bust from my chest. Still my body was just completely unresponsive to even the most politely stated logical request. My vision was fading again as what must have been more black blood dripped over my eyes making my eyes sting leaving a metallic taste in my mouth with each breath. Now blind but still seeing the horrible visage of the creature that had just moment before been about to kill me or worse. Now not even the nearly 